right, with us and from the heart of Texas, Mark Enberg doing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Mark, you just saw the 3D version uh, from 2013. What'd you think? I liked it very much. It was good to see. It was good to see that they uh, that that uh, slasher pictures aren't resorting to just shock and startle techniques. That um, that the script was really an extension of the original 1974 Toby Hooper film. It's, it's sort of a, a, the story is about what happened to that Leatherface, not the Leatherface that was uh, that that was changed and altered over the years uh, as just another impenetrable Hulk. This was more about the uh, the mentally handicapped, uh, somewhat vulnerable Leatherface that Toby Hooper had originally intended in his 1974 flick, and then extended in the 1986 sequel. So is this, this is the this is a total remake of the of the 1974 version. No, no, it's more of a sequel. Okay. Uh, the 1974 version, and the interesting thing is that it completely ignores uh, the, the 1986 version. It's kind of like forget that it never happened. It's kind of like uh, kind of like Terminator 3 in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. <laughs> it's kind of like forget that. We'll just we'll, we'll just change the timeline completely, and we'll just add another. Scenario. Or like Superman Returns, I guess, where they just forgot about the third and the fourth movie. Right, 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 and they just sort of overrode it. Yeah, gotcha. So how was the 3D, though? Like, in, I think that horror in 3D should be kind of like a, the new way to do, do move these movies. How was it? Was it worth the money? To tell you the truth, I uh, I can't lie, I didn't see the 3D. Oh. I, thought, I saw the 2D version because I am so over the 3D thing. I, I I will gladly take the loss of special effects over being able to see through the the, the lights, the, the correct amount of lighting and filters that the uh, cinematographers originally intended. I think that uh, 3D is too much of a gimmick um, but, these days. But aren't they it's shooting like it like, like Avatar? Aren't they shooting according to the 3D though? Like they they have the 3D yeah. line the cinematography. Yeah, and you could tell that there were certain scenes that that uh, there's a, there's a, 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 a real crop leading scene when Leatherface just throws his chainsaw right at the right at the screen. Yeah, and the, the the effect is, is supposed to just come right at you, and you still get that. I mean, you know, it, it may not have the uh, third dimensional effects because you don't have the glasses or the technology with the screening, but you still, you know, the screens are big enough that it's still it, it's still startling to see. All right, so it's um, it's Monday after the the weekend of the of the movie that came out this weekend, and it made a lot of money. Like it made more than the studios kind of expected it to make, and made over twenty million dollars. Like, it, was it just because they're hungry? Like, uh, the the audience is hungry because they haven't had a horror movie in the last like few months. Yeah, I think so. I think people are uh, I, I think people are sort of burned out over the good nature of Christmas that they're ready to go to a movie theater and see some people kill each other. Yeah, see some dismemberment, see some cannibalism. Sure. Um, oh, that, that's actually something I'd like to uh, I'd like to t- touch on was uh, the theme of cannibalism, which I mentioned in uh, in my review. Yeah, is pretty much all but abandoned in this chapter in this entry. And, well, we don't like that anymore. You know, the generation X, generation Y audience doesn't like cannibalism. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, to me, that was one of the creepiest aspects of Toby Hooper's original. Was it was it was almost insulting. It's not even bad enough that he chased you down and killed you with a chainsaw, but they ate you and sold you as chili. <laughs> just it was it was an even it was just a humiliating fate that they gave you. <laughs> all right, is there a scene but, to this movie at all? Like, is there is it just like total like the basic plot points and like gore and like horror? You know, it, you know what movie it really reminded me of. Um, I don't know. If, I, I don't know how off base I am on this one, but it actually was kind of like a, the horror version of A Fistful of Dollars. Okay. It's it's sort of like a small town in this in a, the mythological Newt, Texas, and apparently there's these law-abiding citizens uh, known as the Carters. So the, the, the family is the Carters. The mayor is. Um, I'm sorry, not the Carter. Uh, let me let me look it up here. I forgot the. It's um, it's the Hartmans, the okay. Hartmans versus the Sawyers. The Sawyer being the name of the family, yeah. of the uh, of Leatherface's family. Um, and the the Hartmans sort of represent 
the law-abiding citizenry, and they're the uh, they're the ones who actually torch down Leatherface's family at the very beginning of the movie. I don't want to I don't want to announce any spoilers, but sure. it happens literally in the first five minutes of the movie, so I don't think it's really much of a spoiler. Okay. And that is actually, the opening sequence is really the, uh, the the best part of the movie. That's the part of the, of the movie that I think that the fans, the Texas Chainsaw um, uh, fanboys, are really going to have the best time with. Um, primarily because there's uh, there's a few uh, there's a few cameos in that scene. Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface in the uh, in the, the very first Chainsaw movie, uh, has actually a couple of lines as an elderly member of the family, and. Um, Bill Moselli, the very great Bill Moselli, who played the absolute horrific Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 in 1986, gets to recreate the character of Drayton Sawyer, who play, who is Leatherface's brother, who is also in the first two Chainsaw movies. Okay. After the first two t- Toby Hooper's Chainsaw movies, it's the 1974 and 1986, the franchise became something else much more boring, I think, starting with Jeff Burr's Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3, Leatherface. And where in those movies you'll see, Leatherface is no longer a big, goofy, cannibalistic... Um, uh, mental handy. retard, yeah. He's mental retarded. Yeah. Is that, is that <laughs> key to say? Yeah. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for these He's special. Uh, yeah, yeah, completely. Well, it's interesting. You know, to tell you how bad a movie can can uh, affect you. The reason why I'm watching, why I don't want to call him that, is because I've seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, and there are a couple of uh, there's a character in that movie, Stretch, played by Caroline Williams, who gets killed because she she's uh, she's uh, blowing the whistle on the family on the radio. So. Like, you know, I, even though I'm a grown man, I know there's yeah. no such thing as Leatherface with the family. In the back of my mind, I'm still thinking, man, I don't want any demented fans to come find me. <laughs> because cause I call Leatherface a retard. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is what he was. I mean, let's face it, in the first in the first two pictures, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't like Michael Myers. He wasn't like, uh, like Jason Voorhees. He wasn't like Freddy Krueger. It wasn't even like he knew what he was doing. He was just sort of like this... Uh, this a uh, very loyal family member who would chain, chainsaw you up in the oatmeal if you crossed his family's path. And for some reason, I always thought that was so much scarier than Dude. what than what uh, the two thousand the twenty first century version of him was. It is scary. Like when I was when I was a kid, my when the I think I was like ten years old when uh, ten nine or ten when Texas Chainsaw Massacre two came out. My friend Corey got like a hot copy of it or something like that, and so we watched the first one and then the second one when I was like nine years old. And I'm like, I still, I'm still scared of that I, I, it still freaks me out that the, the chainsaw. I don't want to see these movies anymore because it's like it was too much for me, especially the, the original one. It was very creepy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just someone like with a ch- with a mental retarded person with a chainsaw. Like, just think about that image for a second. Yeah, yeah. Who <laughs> who is uh? The, the, the key word is unsupervised. Yeah, exactly. That's the key word, uh, right? Yeah, that that uh, it, it, that he was uh, he was just on the loose, and uh, and then I thought I think the movies like to uh, I think as the film has progressed, I I barely even remember the Next Generation, the one with Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. But I remember that that was more of the same. It was more of that he wasn't he was angry and he was pissed off and, and wanted to basically kill everybody for no real motivation. I think Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey are trying to forget about that movie because they don't want it on their resume, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and guys <laughs> like me keep bringing it up. <laughs> yeah, because it's part of their thing. But at the same time, it's like I, re- like I remember when the, the number two came out, and it's kind of 12 years is a long time for a sequel. And I think that because of the home, correct me if I'm wrong, I was a young, I remember this, but I remember the home video version of the original Texas Chainsaw got, had a huge cult following, which led to the sequel, finally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back then, the media markets were so simple yeah. that a movie would, if a movie, if a movie was only considered successful by its box office strength. And, um, you know, the original Texas Chainsaw made all kinds of shocking money. And it does, it does seem like 12 years was a long time for, uh, for the sequel to come out. 
And my guess was that Toby Hooper and the production companies probably just figured that we're not going to be able to top that, not without an X rating. Yeah. And that any, anything that more that we can do to top what we did in the original, we're going to be rated X, and that movie's not going to make any money. So we're going to, I don't know if they planned on waiting or if that 1986 came along and they said, well, you know, I just saw Hellraiser. <laughs> or uh, or I just saw the, I, I don't think Hellraiser was even out by then. But, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street was out by 1984. Uh, Friday the 13th was well into part four, part five. So I think that was kind of that that, that, that uh, the production companies were like, okay, things are a little bit more relaxed. Let's cut off some heads and chainsaws and see the blood squirting again. you got to admit, it's one of the better titles, you know, for a horror movie, I guess, right? It's brilliant. It opens it up to, to great comical uh, impressions. Bill Moselli, who played Chop Top and Two, uh, got his start by making a parody called The Texas Chainsaw Manicure, <laughs> which was just a low-budget, you know, silly film about people who kill you while they give you a manicure or nothing. <laughs> but uh, I always thought that it would make a great Broadway play. The, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Sure, sure, why not? Singing and dancing. But wouldn't the, wouldn't the noise of the chainsaw be too much for the audience, though? If you can turn it into a musical instrument, I'm sure that, that you could probably get a good song out of it. Okay, I never thought of that before. Okay, where does this, like, okay, there's seven movies. I, it's, it's spanning 40 years. Obviously, this it still has a pulp culture or a reference. Like, people, no matter if they've seen the movie or not, knows of the this franchise, right? Right. Where does it hold up with the rest of, like, the horror franchises of all time? Definite improvement um, compared to what I saw, compared to what I've seen, which is um, which is um, interesting in that my major complaint about most horror movies that are out these days, I'm talking about the Saw pictures, um, anything that I've seen... Paranormal like, Activity, I guess, is the big new franchise. Yeah, yeah. The Paranormal Activity especially are what I what, what are called um, shock and startle pictures. You know, they're genuinely, generally creepy throughout the picture, but they really earn their big scares through only a, a few infrequent moments throughout the picture where something jumps out at you, like, say, in, Insidious, where which is really mostly a calm, calm movie throughout, but there's yeah. a couple of shots ghosts that scare you. I gotta admit, that movie wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. No, I, I know no. they're making a sequel this year, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's the same people who did Paranormal Activity are behind that one. No, it's actually the and same people who did Saw. James Wan, I think, is the guy who did the Saw movies. Yeah. Yeah. And they're also, that that was actually the production company that's behind this, uh, this latest Texas Chainsaw reboot. Okay, but obviously there's, there's, they're, they're not stupid because these are low-budget movies. Like, the movie was like, what, $8 million, $9 million. It already made its money back on the first weekend and then some. They're doing Friday for the 13th. They're doing Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, they're, they're not stupid by re rebooting these, these, these franchises, right? Like, look how much money it made this weekend. Right. There's an audience, so sure. I, obviously, right? Yeah, they're picking the right franchises. But I don't, I don't know if I could say that they're doing the right things with them. But are that's the quiet. But you're you're saying that they they, they, they compared to the Friday the Thirteenth and Nightmare reboots, this was the better reboot of the other two. I like the Friday the Thirteenth reboot. I, I I would actually put that one at the top. You know, compared to the Halloween reboot, eh, that was okay. But again, that was my same complaint that instead of turning Mike Myers into anybody creepy or um, intriguing, they just made him. If you've seen Rob Zombie's Halloween pictures, yeah. Michael Myers is just basically another Jason. I mean, he's, he's, he can't be killed, he can't be stopped, he's so huge. It, it's, um, he, it's doesn't say, he doesn't have any lines, like, yeah, he just, he just he's in the side. Right, right. Yeah. He, he, just a quiet, menacing force. And uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot completely dropped the ball. I hate that. I, I, I completely uh, missed that one. I only saw it once in the theater, and that's... That, that's pretty historic for me because I love my Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but, uh, but that was just a complete uh, to me. I would say that uh, the Texas Chainsaw reboot is probably on a level close to the Friday the 13th reboot. It's definitely better than the, than the Nightmare on Elm Street, and I would say better than Rob Zombie's Halloween pictures. 
Okay, so the, the, was it the movie, oh, the, was it, is the ending open-ended? Were they, like, setting up a sequel? Uh, as always, yeah, pretty much. There's, well, the ending, I, I really can't say much about what happens in the third act, uh, because cause it, does throw, it does throw you a curveball, something, it, it goes in a different direction than what horror movies normally do, and that was also good to see. It wasn't, it, I, I can't say that it was predictable. Okay, so the, to go back to what I was asking you before, is there a theme to these films at all? Like, is there kind of a, like any sort of message, or is it just like, retarded guy has chainsaw, he kills people, the end? Yeah, well, originally with my opening, the opening graph that I was going to have in the review was, if there's a moral to be learned from the Texas Chainsaw Master reboot, is if you have a friend who gets an estate, who, who inherits, a, a, a surprise estate in Texas, best not to go with them because not only will you be killed, you will not be avenged in any way. And that, that's pretty much the only, you know, as far as I'll say, I, I don't want to, to, to blow anything yeah. for anyone who hasn't seen the movie yet. But uh, it was refreshed. I was really glad, but I was glad when the movie was over because I was glad that I wasn't bored. I wasn't bored. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't misled. I, I didn't predict how it would have ended, and I think that's really in this day and age one of the best things you can ask for in a horror movie. So was it? Was it? Did it have enough horror and gore in it, though? You know what? It actually, it's, it, as far as gore went, it was well. I got, I got take. I was going to say it had surprisingly little, but I just now talking, I just remembered a few scenes. Yeah, it's pretty gory. <laughs> All right. um, but it, it's not unnecessarily violent. It's, uh, it's much more action paced than it is just overly grotesque. All right, last question. Out of the seven movies, and I can't believe they made seven in, 30, in the last 39 years, which is kind of amazing in a way, what's the best out of the seven and what's the worst out of the seven? Best out of the seven, you can't, you can't top the... Uh, the original? Well, I, it's close between the original and the 1986 sequel, um, which I know a lot of, a lot of people consider just blasphemy because they, they just consider the 86 sequel a silly remake. But, uh, or a silly uh, uh, comic sequel. You have it high on your uh, top 100 list, right? The, the, the sequel? I think you have it pretty high, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm still to this day just uh, bothered, genuinely bothered by the imagery in that movie. And that movie was full on cannibalistic. I mean, that, that, that was the one, even more so than the first one, than the 1974 version, that one really use that uh, that plot device of the fact that they're cannibals. In the first one, it's more or less that they're just eating you and serving you as a roadside barbecue. In the second one, it was more like, well, they've gone mainstream. <laughs> and they're selling you, and they're, they're now killing you and chopping you up and selling you as chili across the state of Texas. So it's even more humiliating <laughs> and more denigrating that, that you were killed by the Sawyer family. Okay, and what was uh, the worst? What's the worst? The worst I got to go with uh, the the next generation, even though I barely even remember it. All I remember is just not being not being excited or intrigued or entertained by it. I just wanted the thing to end. But that was funny, interesting because Kim Henkel, I guess, was the writer of the original one. I mean, then she wrote, she directed it and wrote that one. She tried to reboot. I guess they tried to reboot the franchise again. Yeah. Which didn't work, but they had two stars. That's kind of an amazing, kind of little like uh, trivia question in the movies where they had. They had two stars, like two bona fide movie stars in that movie before they were famous. Yeah. Well, and so did the first one. The, uh, uh, here's a great, uh, here's an even better trivia question. Who does the uh, the opening narration in the 1974 uh, version? It's it, 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 probably one of the creepiest parts of the, uh, of the 1974 classic is the, the opening scroll, which has this narration which really makes it sound like this really happened. It gets sort of a documentary, and it says... And I, I, know the answer to, I know the answer to this question, because I was doing right, the page was, for your... I was doing the page on your review, so I would know this, but it, it was John Larroquette, right? John Larroquette. Yeah, from uh, Night Court. From Night Court, yeah. Yeah, yeah and if you, if you listen close, you can complete it. It's, it's hard to not imagine Dan Fielding from Night Court <laughs> so, so delivering uh, the, the very... The, the very uh, uh, gravelly on the afternoon of August 13th, 1974, a Volkswagen van crashed in southwestern Texas. You know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> very, uh, yeah. very poetic, almost. 
Of course, and before he was famous too. But yeah, all right, so yeah. the bottom line is that there's going to be more uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacres to come, obviously, right? Probably. Uh, it's, it made, I think, uh, $23 million over the weekend. Um, now that award season is going to be kicking up, that means that uh, there are going to be just better pictures that are going to be coming out. Uh, well, that more people are going to be seeing movies that are nominated uh, in place of things like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But this is the year. Uh, that, that every month, every January, every year, there's always there's always a couple horror movies that come out that make a lot of money because I think that's what they the, the people are hungry for them, right? They're sick of the franchise in the like family movies and the dramas, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a definite market, and it's uh, you're right. It definitely splurges and peaks right around this time. Yeah. And I don't know if there is honestly any connection between the holiday, the end of the holiday season, and the uh, the, the spike in horror pictures. I was only joking, but there may be some truth in that. So there is, because I think that people, there's a certain audience, fanboy audience, that is is sick and tired of these like dramas, and they want gore, yeah. they want their splatter, or cheesy, you know, cheesy kid pictures. Yeah, but the danger is, is that people don't take these movies as cheesy. They take them very seriously, right? So that's just my beef, but who am I to talk? <laughs> um, no comment? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking about any uh, anything else that might be uh, noteworthy about the, the, the movie. I really don't want to spoil anything. All right. Um, the, the, there are plenty of good surprises. If you're looking, to find, if you're looking for something that has good scares but not... So many that you get bored and numb to it. It's a good picture to check out. But I, I, for anybody who's who's a fan of the 1974 original, I definitely would recommend seeing it. 